In the wild, there are seven species of lemurs and 12 species of dwarf lemurs, but they're only found on that particular, those particular islands. The lemur family itself is a member of the primates, just like us. And so when Chance was first born, I knew what kind of milk I had to get. But in the morning, when Chance was born on Good Friday, by the way, and my husband, Doug, cleans that enclosure first thing in the morning. Every year for the last four years, our mama lemurs, we have two mother lemurs and one male lemur. Every year for the last four years, the mama lemurs have each had twins, and they've raised them successfully. In the wild, lemurs are endangered, but at Space Farms, we're having a population problem. <laughs> but the mama lemur had her twins this year, and she decided not to raise this little guy. So Doug brought him across the street to me, and handed him, my, Doug is my husband, Doug handed him to me in a bag of rags, and he says, are you up for a challenge? And I said, well, yeah, honey, what do you got? And he says, well, this little guy has no chance without you. So I opened up the bag of rags, and there was this little lemur, and He's real little now, you think, but when he was first born, he was only about this long, not including his tail. He weighed less than two ounces, and I knew he didn't have much luck, because I thought he was dead. And I said to my husband, I said, but honey, you know, he's dead. And Doug says, well, he was breathing when I brought him across the street. I said, well, all right, let's see what happens. So I put him in my hands, and he fit right curled up in the bottom of my hand, warmed him up. He still had six inches of umbilical cord and placenta still attached, so I had to do that little bit of cleanup first. And then I put it in my hands and he started to warm up and wiggle, so I figured, okay, well, I better get him some food. Well, for those of you who aren't familiar with the local area, this is Beamerville, this is downtown Beamerville, and Sussex, where the grocery store is, is actually six miles that way. It takes about 20 minutes on the curvy roads. So I hopped in the car. And I said to myself, well, I'm going to go buy this expensive premature human milk. I better make sure this little critter's going to be alive by the time I get to town. So being a good Girl Scout, I uh, tucked him in my shirt for some surround heat, if you know what I mean. And I went to town. I got to the grocery store and bought what I needed there, the premature human milk, went to the drug store to get eyedroppers. So I asked the folks behind the counter, I said, you know, do you have any eyedroppers? And they all know me pretty well. They said, well, Laura, what are you raising? I said, a baby lemur. And they said, what size do eyedroppers do you need? And I said, well, what size do you have? I need really tiny. He's got a teeny tiny black mouth surrounded by teeny tiny black lips. And they said, well, we'll bring you some. So they brought him down and they put out six eyedroppers, different sizes on the counter. And they said to me, well, what do you think? I said, well, geez, I really don't know. And then I went, well, here, let me try him on. So I pulled the lemur out, and I thought everybody on the behind the counter was going to fall right over. And every now and then, if you have a baby that you know might not make it, you need to make that emotional barrier, so you give them goofy names. Right? So we called this guy the no-chance lemur, like the last-chance motel, you know, or stuff like the last-chance gas station. This was the no-chance lemur. At four weeks, he was doing really, really well. We changed his name to a pretty good chance. <laughs> and at eight weeks old, I took him to the vet. We weighed him. He weighed a whopping eight ounces. And we changed his name to Fat Chance. So they use their tail for signals. So that's very important for him. And he also uses his tail, wraps it up around his shoulders at night when he wants to have a scarf in case he's sleeping. He also, if you look at his feet while he has them uh, stretched out on my arm, he has these little gripper pads on the bottom of him, on the end of his toes, just like a tree frog. And he can hang on to just about anything. Guys, you figured that he'd be uh, nocturnal, but he's not. They're daytime animals. Lemurs live to be 18 to 22 years. Socialization factor is very important with these guys. And the troops of a wild lemur can be anywhere from 15 to 33 members. And they do um, respond well to each other, but he would be a foreign male if I put him back in. But we have arrangements with the Staten Island Zoo for him to have a girlfriend already because he's special. He's not just one of those boys with the bands, you know. He's a, they hang on to their mothers so very tight and their life depends upon it. So if they can't hang on, they're in big trouble. Fingers, I'm not holding on to him at all. All right. Now his mom would jump from tree to tree to tree to tree. She would jump from the top down to the bottom and go around the corner and back again and up and down and all over the place. And it's absolutely amazing. When I first learned that I could do this, I kept putting my hand out. Because let's face it, I am only human and I worry. But he's really got a good grip on me here. I go to the grocery store 
they don't know, but he is with me. Um, you know, it's that hide him in your shirt thing. He's still small. When he gets to be the size of a house cat, I'm probably going to have to change my ways. But I'm assuming by that time he will be emotionally developed enough, like the other lemurs are, to be farther away from mom. Because he has accepted me as mom.